Welcome students, I'm Mr. Boscarini and for our unit on forces and motion today's lesson will be about forces. First the definition, every time you apply a push or a pull on an object, uh, every time an object applies or as we say exerts a push or a pull on another object then we say that that push or pull is a force. Now, when we define a force, it's very important to say how strong that force is. So we want to give a numerical value. Remember, quantity is always defined by a numerical value and a corresponding unit. But in case of forces, it will be very important to say also in which direction that force is applied. Therefore, we are always going to represent forces with an arrow and forces in general are part of a category of quantities known as vectors. Let's see some examples of forces. For instance, a boat at sea. Uh, like any object on the earth, this, um, this boat has its own weight which is a force, it's the effect of a pull of gravity towards the center of the Earth. But at the same time, the water beneath the boat applies an upthrust, which keeps the boat afloat. An airplane, a jetliner. A jetliner is pushed forward by its engines, but at the same time it, it's experienced the air resistance from the atmosphere which he is moving through. Now, if you remember, every time we introduce a new physical quantity, it's always important to say how we're going to measure it, so which tool we're going to, to uh, use most of the time to measure that quantity. And also we have to say what is the unit in the international system of units. For measuring the strength of a force, we're going to use this object, the spring balance, also known as a Newton meter. And it's very simple to use. Uh, first of all, it has a scale and it has a moving part attached to a hook. We apply the force to this hook and we'll pull down this moving part and it will read the intensity of a force. And here has a spring. The spring balances the force that you're applying. And when this is at rest, the force from the spring is equal to the force you're applying on the hook. It also has a zero adjust to compensate eventually for the weight of a moving part, a handle from which you can keep the uh, spring balance or from which you can also suspend it eventually and how do you read these numbers? The unit of force in the international system of unit is the Newton. And the symbol is big N. Now this is the first time we find this kind of unit in the sense the unit takes name from a person, Sir Isaac Newton, but when we use the Newton as a unit we have to remember it has to be represented with small n when it's written in full or with a big N when it's just a symbol. Now, how big a Newton is? So we have a more or less clear perception on how heavy is one kilogram, how long a meter, how much it takes for one second to pass, but how big is a Newton? Here, here we have some examples, for instance, the force needed to switch on a, mm, a switch is about 10 Newtons, the force needed to open a can is 20 Newtons, and watch out for the perfect placement, and the force needed in order to lift a very heavy piece of luggage is about 200 Newtons. You're going to experience yourself by using different types of spring balances how strong uh, different forces are. For instance, you're going to try to lift your own pencil case 
or your backpack using different types of spring balances. So, what's the learning goal of this lesson? By the end of this lesson, you should be able to define what a force is. So define what it is, how you measure it, and what are the units in the International System of Units. Next lessons will be about the two first uh, laws of motion formulated by Sir Isaac Newton. Newton's first law of motion and Newton's second law of motion.